All the way back in 2018, Innisloth released a game called Among Us. Although it wasn't initially successful, it suddenly blew up in 2020 and became one of the most played games of that year. There are endless hours of enjoyment from not just playing the game, but also watching others play it. Hidden role games are one of my favourite genres, and that's why I want to figure out how to make it a competitive game. I'm going to break this video up into two different segments, game information and the competitive format. I'm not going to have any tier lists in this video because there's no optimal strategy in this type of game, it largely depends on the players. So rather than try to figure that out, we're going to look at game information that's going to help both the crewmates and the imposters develop their own strategies. Tasks are the little mini-games that the crewmates need to complete. If all the tasks are completed, the crewmates automatically win. Some of the tasks lead into others, and there's a few different types of them. Short tasks are short. They're usually just one task. Long tasks are either are many tasks one after another, or they require some sort of waiting built into them. Some of these need to be done in specific orders. Common tasks are tasks that if one crewmate has, they all have. A few tasks on every map have a visual element that everyone can see. You can turn these animations off. Finally, during an emergency meeting, there are tasks that end the emergency that any players, including the imposters, can complete. It's important to note that some tasks can only be done in specific orders, such as the refueling task. If you pay attention to imposters, you can catch them doing these in the wrong order. You can also catch imposters if they don't do a common task, or if they fake a common task that you don't have. Vents are all across the maps. They can be used by imposters as a way to hide, but late in development, Innisloff added the ability to travel between them. Vents can only go to other specific vents that are connected to them. For example, the vent in Electrical and Scaled only goes to Security and Medbay. The exception to this is on Mirror HQ, all of the vents are connected. Other players can see imposters jumping in or out of the vent if they have vision on it. It's also important to note that while in the vent, the imposters' kill cooldowns are paused. Vent animations still play in the Fog of War. The imposters have the option to create different sabotages to try and slow down the crewmates. Emergency meetings cannot be called during these. You can't call multiple sabotages at once, and the sabotages have a cooldown. Imposters can still call sabotages after they die, and there's a few variants of sabotages. The reactor sabotage causes a countdown that if it isn't stopped, immediately wins the game for the imposters. To stop this, two different players need to simultaneously hold down a hand scan task at two different locations. Oxygen is similar to reactor, but usually the locations are further apart, Plus, instead of holding down a hand scan, you need to enter a code into each panel. These don't have to be done at the same time, however, and there's no oxygen sabotage on the Polis map. The light sabotage causes the vision radius of all the crewmates to be dramatically reduced, allowing imposters to sneak around or get kills much easier. This doesn't affect the cameras. To fix this, you need to turn on all the switches back in electrical. The communication sabotage causes all the crewmates to lose indicators of their task, their list of tasks, and their task complete bar. Additionally, cameras, admin, heart monitors, and the door logs do not work during the sabotage. The door sabotage causes the doors in the surrounding area to shut for a little while. This gives the imposters a pretty big advantage since they can move around with vents. On the Polis map, the doors can be shut even during a sabotage and they won't open on their own, but the crewmates just need to do a little mini game to open them. There are a few interactables on each map that can be used to monitor certain aspects of the game. On the Skeldon Polis, there are security cameras that can monitor certain sections of the map. These aren't affected by the light sabotage, and while in use, the cameras have a red dot on them. On the Skeld, you see all four cameras at the same time. On Polis, you have to individually scroll between each camera, although they always display the in-use animation, even if they're not specifically being viewed. On all three maps, there are admin maps that can be used to view how many people are in each room, but not who. It doesn't show people in hallways. On top of that, Dead bodies count as a person for its display. On Mirror HQ, there's three door sensors in an intersection that when passed send a message to the door logs saying who passed which sensor. They can be used to either catch imposters using vents to get around, or knowing who was in what area for upcoming meetings. On Polis, there are heart monitors that show the condition of current players. If it shows a red dead message underneath that player, it means they've died this round. The disconnect message is for players that have died during previous rounds. Here I'll go over a few notes and tricks to help out with general gameplay. All the tasks in medbay are on the right and the vent is on the left, meaning if a player leaves when facing right, they likely came from the vent. Multiple players can stack up together against a wall to make it appear like there's only one player there. This isn't the best trick since there's still two names, some clothing overlap, 
and the players both have to stand still, but it can be pretty funny if an unobservant killer kills one of them. Everyone has to complete the same common tasks. If you see someone avoiding the common task that you have, they may be the imposter. If you see someone do a common task that you don't have, they are almost definitely the imposter. You can catch imposters faking certain tasks if you see them doing them out of order or they describe doing them out of order. If the amount of crewmates is equal to the amount of imposters, the imposters instantly win. Because of this, if you're in a meeting where one third of the remaining players are imposters, you have to vote someone out, or else the imposters can instantly win next round. Similarly, if voting someone off will leave you that many players, it's better to skip the vote unless you're certain on who the imposter is. Even with visual tasks disabled, you can have a good idea whether other people near you are faking tasks or actually doing them. Some longer tasks take approximately the same amount of time for everyone, give or take a little while depending on individual reaction time. If you and someone else start doing a task around the same time, ideally you should finish around the same time, although this is pretty easy to fake for the imposter. So now that we've discussed game specifics, let's look at how we can play it competitively. Generally hidden role games like Werewolf, TTT, and Among Us aren't the best for competitive games due to their randomly assigned teams that aren't balanced in numbers at all. However, let's give it a shot anyway. So firstly, let's tackle the issue on how to score players. Due to there being less players on the imposter team than the crewmate team, it makes sense for imposter wins to be worth more. Just as an estimate for this video, let's say that crewmate wins are worth 1 point and an imposter win is worth 3. In this hypothetical scenario, you'd still be playing multiple rounds so players that don't get any imposter rounds can still win, but they have to do very well. There's a couple options for formats here depending on how many players are in the game. Let's have a look at them. If we have just 10 players, we can have a very simple format. Two imposters, recommended settings except for visual tasks off, confirm ejects off, anonymous voting on, and taskbar off. Essentially with these settings, we can keep playing rounds until one player gets 6 points. That player would win. If multiple players get 6 points together, the entire group keeps playing until there's one player with more points than the rest of them. If we have 20 players, we can do a similar system, but instead with multiple games. We can start with two games of 10 players with the same settings as before, but rather than searching for the first player to get 6 points, we're looking for the first 5 to get a clear lead in points over the other. Same as before, if more than 5 players get ahead of the others at once, we keep playing until exactly 5 are above everyone else. After this, the 5 winning players from each game become one game of 10 players and play with the first format we discussed. With higher numbers, we can do this similarly. For example, with 40 players, we go from 4 games of 10 to 2 games of 10 to 1 game of 10. We also have the option to make later groups more difficult for the imposters. We can change things like the amount of imposters, increase the kill cooldown, turn on visual tasks, and decrease task amounts. If we do this, instead of scoring the final round normally, we can just make it a single imposter and very hard for them, and the first player to win an imposter round wins. Overall, Among Us is an amazing game with loads of potential. Hidden roll games aren't played competitively usually, and if one happened to blow off, it could be great for the genre as a whole. Among Us is really unique as far as hidden roll games go, especially the mechanic of only being able to communicate during meetings. Among Us is amazing, and I cannot recommend it enough. It's a blast to play with friends, as long as you're not worried about losing them. Let me know your thoughts. Did I forget anything important? Do you have suggestions on better ideas or competitive formats? Let me know. If you liked the video, leave a like or even subscribe. I like to make videos about playing games wrong. If you have any suggestions for my next video, let me know. Thank you.